Welcome to DIY Guitar Making, episode number 45, brought to you by Eric Schaefer Guitars. Learn more about my premium guitar making courses at ericschaeferguitars.com. In episode 44, we looked at catalosh as an alternative wood for fingerboards. Now I'm going to show you my thought process for milling down these boards for fingerboards, bridges, and head plates, and potentially even heel caps, end wedges, and rosettes. The idea is to carry the design motif of the color and grain of the wood out to other parts of the instrument. Obviously, if we used bobinga for the head plate, rosewood for the fingerboard, ebony for the bridge, and paddock on the rosette, there wouldn't be any consistency aesthetically from one end of the instrument to the other. So I like to use the same species of wood for most of these parts, and ideally I am pulling these parts from the same board as you'll see me do here. The pale whites of the sapwood and dark purples of the heartwood of this catalosh provide a unique opportunity for some artistic use of the book matching technique in the making of head plates, heel caps, end wedges, and rosettes. But more on that later. Proper planning is everything. I could take a strictly economical approach to milling out these boards. And if these were something more straight grained or homogeneous looking, like a board of jet black ebony, I would take that economical approach and plan my cutting to get as many fretboards and bridges as I can. However, I tend to seek out wood with more interesting character, and therefore I take the approach of an artist rather than the approach of a manufacturer for these parts of the guitar. I like to start with the fretboard, since that takes up the most real estate and will be what the player sees most of the time. I mark out where the ideal fretboard can be pulled I usually try to pull the fretboard from somewhere in the middle of the board so that I have the option of pulling the head plate from the area immediately adjacent to the nut end of the fretboard and the bridge from the area immediately adjacent to the end of the fretboard tongue. The end effect being that the grain or color variations, or in this case the interesting delineation between heartwood and sapwood, will carry seamlessly from headstock to fretboard to bridge and possibly even beyond to the end wedge. Once I've planned out my cuts, I square up one edge of the board on a shooting board with a jack plane. It's very important that the board is checked with a square on the bandsaw table. I will first be resawing the head plate veneers, and any amount of out of squareness will result in veneers that are super thin on one end and super thick on the other. For resawing, I swap out the blade for a half inch blade, which will track better in the cut. I adjusted the tension, the tracking, and the guide posts for the bigger blade. And then I added a resaw bar to my fence. The resaw bar allows me to adjust the angle I'm cutting at as I go to correct for bandsaw drift. I give myself some straight lines to follow on the bandsaw, leaving plenty of space between the lines to account for the blade's kerf, some inevitable bandsaw drifting, and for thicknessing on the drum sander later. I use the marking gauge to make these marks. Lastly, I make sure that the blade is square to the table and make adjustments to the table if necessary. And here I go, making the cuts very slowly so as not to force the blade, and I'm adjusting as I go for bandsaw drift. Now here is where it gets interesting. I can unfold these veneers like I'm opening a book, and because these veneers were immediately adjacent to each other in the board, 
the veneer faces should look like mirror images of each other. If we join these veneers in this way, we will have lots of attractive symmetry to work with in our design. This is called book matching, and you may be aware of its use in creating soundboards and backs. Well, it's the same process here. I am just joining three sets of veneers instead of a single set for a top or for a back. Once all three joints are jointed, I glue up all three at once in the joining board. If you're not familiar with this method of jointing and joining, I cover it in depth in two different videos. I'll leave links in the description. While that dries, I cut the rest of the board into oversized blanks for fretboards and bridges. After at least 45 minutes of dry time, I can thickness and smooth the veneer material on my drum sander. Don't try to use a planer for this because the planer blades would be cutting directly across the grain rather than with the grain, resulting in a lot of tear out. Okay, so let's take a look at this material that I've book matched together. I'm gonna wipe some mineral spirits on it so we can really see it pop. And this is actually three, there's three different joints here. There's one here, one here, and one here. This one you can see pretty easily because the sapwood um, exists on one piece but not on the other um, but something like this you can't see the line at all and you won't see that line and there's a lot of opportunity here uh, there's obviously opportunity to do something like pull a head plate out of here and have this sapwood line run straight down the center of the headstock and that would just look really cool um, but there's opportunity, artistic opportunities for all kinds of things when you grab a bunch of head plates and book match them together like this. As you can see, um, all the symmetry, obvious symmetry right there, symmetry there, and symmetry there at all the joints. And you can use that for, say, a heel cap might look real nice right here with the peak coming right to that sharp line between the sapwood and the heartwood. I think that would look really cool. I might use that. Uh, another thing that would also look really cool is an end wedge. Can um, the center line here of this joint could run right down the center of a really sharp looking end wedge. Or if I wanted some sapwood in there, I could use one of these two for the end wedge. But uh, let's take a look at everything we have here and see if I can determine what I want to use for my next guitar or one of my next guitars. I don't know if I'm going to start building with this right away. I'm just playing around right now. So, uh, one thing in particular that I kind of like and that I think I might end up doing is not going for the symmetry here with the headstock and rather taking this horizon line formed by the Heart, uh, by the line between the heartwood and the sapwood and continuing that onto the headstock. I think that that's what I'm going to do with that and then I will just have a bridge something like this down at the bottom. For more videos like this subscribe to my YouTube channel here. But remember not every episode of DIY guitar making is a video. 
I like to write, too, so some episodes are written articles. For a full archive of episodes, go to my website, ericshaferguitars.com. Click the DIY Guitar Making tab, and you will find page after page of detailed guitar making tips. You can also subscribe to the email list to receive episodes in your inbox as they come out. Just enter your name and email and click sign up now. It's free. While you're there, you can also click the online Guitar Building School tab and check out the online course Building an OM Acoustic with more than 60 detailed instructional videos, discounts to luthier suppliers, and access to myself and a community of builders in the members forum. Finally, if you go to the Hands-On Guitar Building School tab, you can check availability and register for an intensive hands-on workshop with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania. That's all for now. See you later.